Hi everyone, welcome back to another live video. Super excited to be here and don't know where to look. Gonna look here, no, gonna look at myself so I can see all the <laughs> wonderful things. I just, I just enjoy the experience of being able to see myself in a lot of different ways, but right now it's on camera. Um, we're going to talk about a lot of different things today and I'm very much looking forward to this. I, uh, when was the last time I filmed a video? It doesn't actually matter. I'm standing today, which feels a bit different and a bit weird. Um, I'm usually like sitting and it's very relaxed for whatever reason, the energy of just this just felt like I was, <sighs> I felt called to stand and deliver. Um, I like this, the blankness of the background, it's not distracting and yeah, I feel like I get to practice standing and, and speaking. It feels a lot more like here I am and what I want to be doing more of in the coming days, weeks, months, years, decades of my life is literally standing and speaking. So here we are. Let's dive straight in. I want to talk about today this concept of originality and this idea that there is and never will be again, never has been and never will be again another you like literally and we can talk about this from like a metaphysical perspective of you know I get to choose whatever experience I want so theoretically I could come back in and have the exact same life experience over again if my soul chose that like I could literally choose to be Jay Schaefer born at XYZ 8th of November 1992 and kind of recreate that experience for myself but for the sake of this exercise experience video concept that I want to share today we're gonna look at it like literally this is it. I am the first and last of my kind. Someone said that to me the other day and I like lost it. I can started crying because the rarity, like the how unique each and every single one of us is. And I don't just mean like, you know, I mean it's everything. Like it's it's how we show up, it's how we experience the world, it's like our, our blueprint, like our cosmic unique blueprint. It's like our gene keys and our human design and you know the where our astrological chart like where the planets were at the time that we were born ah it's just we're so so unique and I was thinking about this this morning like I've been dropping into my body over the last like 48 hours and really just like allowing the beautiful deep subtle sensations to kind of lead and guide me and also just really connecting with like I mean, this is my whole life, but like <laughs> on a deeper level, connecting with the core of, of who I am. And it kind of hit me and it struck me in this whole new way that if I'm not prioritizing this, what I think, what I feel, what I know, how I experience and see the world, it's lost. Like it's literally never going to be expressed. If I don't share with the world or like even share with myself because this is what it's about right like it's not even about me like showing I guess it is about me like by extension sharing this with the world but if I'm not like in communion and connection with what's actually got like with the experience of being me literally no one is <laughs> like there is no one home and this just, just was kind of like holy fuck and I had this experience of being like oh right like I I have to choose myself like what the f like I have to choose not have to but like also kind of if I want this experience to like I guess have like I guess I don't have to choose it at all do I but what happens if I don't like I'll share I'll share where I was at and then I'll kind of backtrack to that because I'm just having like another bit of a light bulb as I'm explaining this because it's like well I don't have to choose myself but like why would I is that it you know is that like a conscious thing that I want to do um, there is literally like my life experience like how I feel how I see things how I move through the world and yours as well are no less valid than anyone else's and it's so tempting to like look at people who have books and blogs and podcasts and you know are on stages and speaking on Instagram and be like oh, okay like they've you know that's how you human you know like their experience their thoughts their ideas their way of like humaning that's obviously the way to human and whatever I'm doing experiencing feeling thinking knowing I'll just like do as much as I can to kind of catch up and hopefully I'll be like as valid as them one day it's just so false like it's so inaccurate 
and I got this sense of like, I, if I don't like decide that this is like valid and a valid way to human, like how I'm humaning, then, I mean, then what? <laughs> then I spend my whole life looking at other people. <sighs> it's just this piece of like, what was terrifying for me this morning and what I kind of faced off with was that what if what I think and I feel and I know in here is different and anathema to what the tribe around me and the people around me think? Am I still, is it still okay? Is it still worthy? Is it still valid? Am I still going to live by it? And this is something that I've been facing and kind of like coming up against again and again and again lately is like this thing of like, but what I think and feel and know is different than what you're telling me you think, feel, and know. And in the past, I would have left my own thinking, feeling, and knowing, like the experiences, the sensations I felt in my body, I would have like left them. And that's what we call like self-abandonment. Like I just like, okay, well, that's obviously like, we'll just put that over there and gone to follow what someone else was thinking and feeling and knowing, like their way of living, their way of doing things, their way of like experiencing life in the world. And... I mean, that's like, that's what people call self-abandonment is literally like leaving yourself in favor of something else. And this is good. Circling back in my gene keys. Um, if you haven't done your gene keys, go and do it. I mean, if you want to, but it literally talks about this concept of originality. And it's like you, I mean, it says I'm like, I have like the first gene key, which is like the essence of creativity. I think it's like the, literally like the big bang. You are a true original. If you find yourself, this is literally what it says. If you find yourself following or copying anyone else, you have compromised your true nature. And so it's like, holy fuck. Like, not only do I not have like the luxury, privilege, whatever of abandoning myself, I just can't. Like, I just fucking can't. It's not who I am. And so somehow, like somehow I then need to cultivate a sense of like loving and valuing this, like, and I don't just mean like my body. I mean like my soul, right? Like I think of my soul as like the, you know, the whatever, eight, nine feet around my body kind of like, that's also like in and through my body at all times. Like it's just, it's, it's, it's bigger than like, like the physical, but it's like, it's like this thing. I've got to somehow, and this is what I've been doing, I guess, for the last, like, however long is like, I've got to wrap my head around the concept through all of the shame and the conditioning and everything in the world that's telling me otherwise. I've got to wrap, somehow wrap my head and brain around the fact that like, this is valuable and this is what's real and true and good enough. And this is valid. Like it's actually okay to be me. Like what? And I had this thought the other day that like we've got to take the for sale sign off our souls because how many of us are taught and are walking around with this big like fucking for sale sign out the front of like if our, our soul is our home how many of us are walking around with a big fucking for sale sign around our home and letting people come and like tell us that we need to leave our home and this is like I mean we can talk about work we can talk about this in terms of like what we do for money what we do for whatever we think we need outside of us convincing us to like leave our home repeatedly every single day to go and do things that we hate in order to get money this thing that we think that we need and it's like I've had this like big fucking for sale sign because that's what I was taught outside the house of my soul for years and I've had people like I mean this whole kind of situation came up recently because I just was fucking like a big fat fuck no to getting another like temporary job like to getting a bar job to getting a like another nannying gig where I was being paid like $30 an hour to do one of the most important jobs in the world which is looking after children like how is this like you know how like this doesn't this isn't a fucking vibe like no like I was just a big fat fuck no and in the past because of the tension and the discomfort that it creates 
when I'm like, okay, well, I have 18 cents in my bank account. Like, okay, well, um, I'm going to have to rely on like people around me to support me financially in terms of like food and money, stuff like that. Um, there's going to be things that I have to say no to, like things that I would have like paid for before. But something in me was just like, a, it was just like a hell fucking no. Like, no, I'm not going back to working in a bar when, where I feel like I'm not, because the, like this is, this is, I mean, this is valuable and that's not valued in that setting. Like whatever this is, whatever my gifts, skills, talents are, they're not utilized in that setting. They're not valued. People don't appreciate them in that setting. And I know, and this is like the judgment that I've copped from people and from myself, but mostly people <laughs> entitled princess. Like, who do you think you are? Do you think you're better than everyone else? Like, and it's just, it's like, it's waking me up to the reality that so many people, like the spell that so many people are living under. And I've been, I mean, I've been talking about this since for 10, literally 10 years, like do what you love, do what you love, get paid to do what you love. But like the fucking conditioning, like the conditioning that actually comes up in the wake of that, because everyone, like so, like everyone is under this spell or this illusion of like, do what you hate and get rewarded for it. Do something that sucks your fucking soul out of your body and get rewarded for it. Do something that you are like frustrated and like displeased and like do something or do something that you're like, you're kind of just okay with. And this is like the, the kind of that middle ground where it's like, oh, well, I don't hate my job. Like it, it's fine. Like I don't really hate it. But it's, you know, it's definitely, is it lighting you up? No, absolutely not. And it's like, do something that you can tolerate. Do something that's like bearable and get rewarded. But like, what? Like, what? 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 When you actually like, I mean, when you actually sit down and unpack that, like, I mean, that's how our whole culture operates. It's like, you know, yeah, do like override your own yeses and nos. Like if someone was like, you know, wanted to force you to do something that you hated right now, you just feel like, well, fuck off. Like, no. And yet in other areas of our lives, like that's what, that's the deal that we're making every single day. That's the trade-off that we're kind of engaging in. Like the, that's the transaction. It's like, I'll do something that I hate because I'll be rewarded for it. And it's like, well, how is it like, to me, that seems way more like what the fuck than this idea that we could all do what we love and get paid for it <laughs> and get, and actually, actually feel good about what we do. Like feel really fucking good about what we do and feel connected to ourselves while we do it. Like to go to a place every day and maybe it's not even going to a place. Maybe it's literally just waking up in the morning, sitting down at a laptop, a machine, a like literally anything that you do your work on, a bread making fucking thing. I don't know. But like being able to do something that you feel good about something that you look at and you understand and you are curious about and you look at the repercussions of it and you go, yes, like that is what I stand for in the world. That is a good thing. This is a, a valuable and a pure and a good thing. Like whether you, whatever that is, like literally whatever that is. And, and you're also being like, I mean, the compensation, I guess, for your time and your talent and your skill and your energy is proportionate to what you believe you deserve to be paid. And this is like, I had a coach say to me once, she was like, you decide your value. Like, literally, you decide it. And, you, I mean, you decide it or someone else decides it for you. And when we have that big fucking for sale sign on our soul, or outside the house of our soul, it's like we, we're letting other people, it's like literally like refusing to put a price in your house. I mean, some people have like a salary, like a desired salary. But if you're going into any kind of, you know, routine like job where it's like, okay, this is the award wage, this is the, you know, this is what everyone's getting. You're letting someone else decide how much your time is worth, your, you know, everything is worth. And she said to me, she's like, you decide what your value is. And I was like, poofed. <laughs> I've heard, I mean, for me now, I'm kind of, I guess, I navigate it now as like, a, I have like a number or a price that I feel like, and this isn't for, like my soul's not for sale, but in terms of like, if we're thinking about the house analogy, I will invite you into my home and you get to like be in my home for like an hour 
or like two hours or like a, a month, you know, like on and off if we're working together as like client and coach. Like you get to be in my home, you get to sample the goodness, you get to experience the environment that I have created here. And in exchange, this is the price. Like this is the, and it feels, it's a very like, I mean, people talk about like choosing goals with soul or numbers with soul, but like it, it like I, I tune into my own inner wisdom and, and I get a number, I get a figure of what I'm like, that's what it's worth. And it's so like, it's so bizarre because like, I, but it's also like so empowering because like, it's like if you were the, um, like, I mean, the manufacturer of like an egg company or something like that. And you're kind of looking at, you know, the cost and of what it takes to produce. Like I think about everything that it's cost me to get to this point in my life where I have the knowledge and the skills and the wisdom that I do. And I think about like what it has taken for me to kind of arrive at this place. And I look at the, I mean, I guess I'm kind of like taking all these things into account to come up with this number. But it's like, it's so empowering that like you actually, like we actually have the power to do that. It's not like some, you know, like businessman in a foreign like place in like a, a big suit and tie being like, okay, cool. So, you know, eggs are like this much now and milk is this much and this is this. And it's like, no, actually like I have the power to do that. I'm going to decide what this is worth. And I mean, whether people pay it or not and whether like, you know, you have the skills to, I mean, I guess now I'm like, how do I... I guess I'm kind of figuring out like, how do I communicate the value? But it's not even that. It's like, you know, we talk about like being able to communicate effectively like the value of what we have to offer so people can know and they can, but people just see it. Like people, and what's happening for me right now is that like people, walk past my house, metaphorical house, drive past and like, whoa, like, I feel like I need to go in there. Like, I feel like I'm being drawn into this place. And I feel like, and this is like, and this is a beautiful thing about the fact that, I mean, we're not actually like we're houses, but we can move ourselves. If you're in a suburb or you're in a neighborhood where people aren't after the kind of house that you're, you've got. And I feel like that's what I've been doing is like living or placing my house in a suburb where literally in a suburb where people aren't really looking for what I offer. It's not of high priority to them yet because of where they're at on their physical, spiritual, intellectual, emotional journey. And that's my responsibility to be like, okay, well, I understand that I'm learning that. Like I get that now. It's not that there's anything wrong with my house. I don't need to like, renovate or like obsessively renovate or upgrade it or make it look like everyone else's houses. It's just probably like, maybe let's just relocate to another place where people are like genuinely like, you know, curious and excited about who or the, like the fullness of who I am, you know, like, and that's, I mean, that's what I'm doing. Like I'm, I'm moving in a couple of weeks. It's very exciting. <sighs> I've been thinking a lot about yeah. Yeah. I mean, fuck. If I had this experience this morning where I literally felt like I was being strapped into a rocket ship and after having been kind of coasting or cruising or like in this position where I was like watching the ship fly, I'm like back in the motherfucking driver's seat of the ship now. And it's terrifying because it's like I could feel this like this glitch of like in and out of like I'm out of the seat, I'm in the seat, I'm out of the seat, I'm in the seat. And when I'm in the seat, it's like you sit down and all of a sudden the pressure. And I think it's sometimes really good to have some fucking perspective where I'm not in the seat. And I can just watch the ship, you know, for a little, I just watch it flying, let it fucking coast, have it on autopilot. Because when I'm in that seat and I have this like revelation and awareness of like, I am captaining my fucking ship. Like there is no, like I am fucking, like I'm the fucking captain of this like <laughs> life experience. Like I'm sitting in the, there's a dashboard and there's lights and sound and bells and whistles. And it's, you know, it's this like the biggest thing you've ever seen and there's rocket fuel and it's like, all right, we've got to program it for our destination and I've got to somehow fucking fly this thing. And I've got like my inner masculine and the co like co-pilot position beside me. And I'm like, like the, uh, 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 the pressure. And I don't, I used to, I mean, you know, fuck this, like, this 
used to like terrify me to the point where I couldn't even like, I, I was nowhere near the cockpit. I was like off in some like far away place, like running for my life from this position. And cause like, cause yeah. Cause once you're in, I mean, it's like the, the responsibility of being you, of having this like machine that you've got to fly and having this like destination that you not, you've got to get to. And I was listening to Bon Jovi. <laughs> I was listening to, <sighs> we're going to talk about this because this is this whole like slowing down, bringing it back to the moment is all part of this. I was listening to Bon Jovi. That just felt like the most like, this is the song that I need to listen to, to like get me in the moment for like this journey that I'm embarking on right now. This like hero's journey kind of like, let's fucking go. Cause like living on a prayer, right? Like li like we're literally living on a fucking prayer. Take my hand and I make it, I swear. Whoa, living on a prayer, living on a prayer. This is like, and eh. it doesn't make a difference if we make it or not. We've got each other and that's a lot for love. We'll give it a sh it's like this is the traveling song, right? We've got each other. I've got myself. Like all I ever wanted was the experience of being here in the first place. Like this is this is it. Like th this whole thing out of the cockpit in the cockpit. This is all that I signed up for. Like whatever happens, whether I, I'm like I program my fucking destination. If we make it, doesn't fucking matter. Like it does and it doesn't. You know. Because this is like this experience of like in the seat, out, in the seat, out of the seat, in the seat, out of the seat, in the seat. Okay, in the seat. Feel the pressure. Allow myself to experience the tension. Like be okay with it. Feel all the fears. Oh my god, I have to like control all of these. Like you know, like I have these gifts and these skills and this like thing, and I have this giant like all of this fucking rocket fuel in the tank, and I've time somehow got to get from like here to there, and I've got to do it in a way that's like honoring to myself and my body, and like ah, it's a lot of fucking pressure. <sighs> breathe, breathe. The pressure is not a bad thing. I don't think the pressure is a bad thing. I think the pressure is like a, it's like a, um, what is it? It's just responsibility. Like that's, it's, it's, I just, I, it's, it, I think it's, it's an illusion in some sense because there is no pressure ever on us at all, no matter what, from a spiritual perspective, but it's a healthy I guess it's an illusion that I've chosen in some way or another because it's a cool experience because when there's pressure, it means that there's stakes. And when there's stakes, it means that there's, you know, like an element of excitement and like adventure and like, Ooh, it, like, it's like, yeah, you know, like it's just something important to do or be accomplished. Oh, oh, rah. why I'm like bringing it back to myself and continue like taking these like little breaths is because I've had this tendency to rush and this is all connected. We're going to land this ship eventually. Um, but it's like, I've felt like I needed to, and I've noticed in the last couple of days, like my brain is going at, it was going at a different pace to my body. And I was moving at the pace of my brain at the expense of my body. And this is how we get to this whole revelation of like, if I'm not listening to my body, literally no one is. And if I'm not having the experience and advocating for what is happening in me right now, literally no one is like no one else is. And so like, if I'm like, this is like, this is valid. What I feel is valid. It's just as valid as what Richard Rudd is feeling. It's just as valid as what, Barack Obama is feeling it is just as valid as what the most powerful, important, you know, worthwhile human and those things are not real. This hierarchy of like worth and power and importance is not fucking real. What's happening in here, this is what's real. And the importance of what's happening right here inside of you, inside of me, this is what is fucking real more real than anything that's happening out there. And so <laughs> I realized that my head was, and my, I was like, my head was like directing me and it was like, okay, journal, okay, shower, okay, this, okay, that. And there's something wrong with that. It's not a bad thing. I'm very productive. Like I get a lot fucking done, but it's also like, is that how I want to live my whole life? You know, is that, I feel like there's, 
I was also getting these messages from my subconscious of like, slow the fuck down, like slow down, slow down, slow down, slow down, slow down, <sighs> which is frustrating sometimes the part of me that's like, I don't want to fucking slow down. And I sat, I literally sat with this part of myself this morning and she's being very gracious in letting me share this, this piece of myself. And I was like, why are you rushing? Like, why do you want to rush? I had a thing. Okay. Why is it so important that we get there quickly? Like, if I'm the only one here, if I am... Really, the whole point of this journey is to have the experience of the journey. Then why am I rushing at all? And the stories were like, because we have to get there first, because we have to get there faster, because we can't be last, because something is chasing us. Like, all of these, like, stories. And then the clincher of, like... I couldn't, I heard this little voice, because I couldn't live with myself if I didn't, X, Y, Z. And, oh my God, I couldn't, if I, I couldn't live with myself, that's, there you go, like, that's your fucking, like, signal. There's a piece of myself that believes that it, like, that love is elsewhere, that is not feeling, it is completely under the illusion that love is outside itself. And so I just sat with it. I was like, okay, cool. One of my friends, Dale, and I did it. Uh, um, we chatted last night. And she was saying that, like, when she has this experience, she just embodies unconditional love. And she just sits there, like, she's holding some bird seed, And there's a bird. And she's like, well, when you're ready, like, I have the bird seed. And I just sat there. I was like, oh, when you're ready, I have, I am unconditional love. So when you're ready, like, come, like, come feast, like, eat, like, chill. Come and, like, taste this. You don't, you know, you, there's no conditions. Like, you don't need to, you, whatever story you're telling, it, I, I still fucking love you. And this piece of myself was like, okay. And then it came forward and it was like, oof, oof. It's so beautiful. And this is what people say when they're like, you know, calling on the pieces of our self home. It's like, oh, because like, you know, there's so many. Yeah, there's so many pieces that have been conditioned to believe that there are conditions, you know, like trained to believe that, you know, you have to do this in order to be worthy of this. And this is the whole thing we're talking about. Like you have to go out and, you know, sacrifice yourself in order to be worthy of money. You have to be you have to do stuff that you hate in order to be like worthy of the reward, you know, the, the fullness. And oh, my God. So now that I'm not rushing. I can actually discover my own true pace and my own true nature and more of this. Cause it's like, and I mean, people I've often questioned, I'm like, do we even have a true nature? Like, are we discovering ourselves who we really are? Or are we just making it up? I think it's probably both. I don't know why, but it probably is because it's always both. Um, but it's like, I actually, I feel like I really actually do. Like there is something in me that is innate that I am not, that I'm not, like I'm making it up, but I've already made it up, you know, like I can't escape it or outrun it. Like it's, it's, there is a, I mean, I guess it's like the limitations of like having a body. I don't know, but I just know that there is like, I feel like there is, I, I have a, a true state, a true nature, a true way of living in life and way of life and way of being. And I know it because I've discovered what I can see what's not it like I've kind of like through trial and error I've been like okay so this feels awful this makes me sick this makes me want to kill myself this makes me want to die I don't want to be on the planet anymore if I live like this so it's like through the series of like eliminating all of the things I've come to this experience of like oh, okay so that's not who I so what about this and I've kind of like discovered a way of like living and being and you know adulting or like humaning experiencing the world and myself and life where I'm like okay like yeah like <laughs> you know like I I'm not suicidal like I don't like I'm I'm cool but not only am I cool I'm like I fucking love this like this is like I find this very thrilling and exciting and fascinating like deeply fucking fascinating this is coming from someone like I did not want to be on the planet 10 years ago 10 years ago 11 years ago 12 years ago whatever through like from like 13, 14, 15, like literally like did not want to be here. It was like, would rather die, like would rather die. And I know so many people are still in that position and still in that place. And it's like, I, 
I fucking, yeah, I, fuck, I know what it's like. And I just, there's nothing wrong with you. This is the, this is the thing. It's like, it's just the way that, and like, I actually do believe that everyone that is like feeling off. Oh, believe that everyone who is feeling suicidal right now and feeling like they just can't take another fucking day on the planet has the potential to discover a way of living that is so aligned with their true and real nature they will fucking love this experience of being alive like fall in love with this life like literally in love to the point where you wake up and you're like yeah like i'm choosing to be here like I, I and this is like the I had the option to not be here and I have that option every single day to leave to not be here and I still choose to be here because I kind of see what like I want kind of want to see what happens you know like I kind of like this I'm curious about this and this is interesting and I like food and you know sex is kind of cool and like you know, I kind of want to see what, like, you know, happens in, like, this TV series. Or even just, like, you know, these tiny little pieces and morsels of, like, I'm all, that's how it starts. I mean, that's, like, that's literally how you, like, that invigorates, like, reinvigorates your, like, lust. It's not even lust. It's, like, zest. And, like, sorry. Your vitality and your, like, ugh, the life. Like, your hunger for it. And not in, like, a starvation sense of, like, a am desperate for it. But, like, a... Like, I'm just, like, I'm fascinated. I'm curious. I'm fascinated. Like, how do I feel about life? <sighs> the inevitability of it. Like, I, I just, I am it. Like, I literally am it. I don't even have to have feelings about it anymore because I just am it. And this is, like, this, I've come that far. Like, that's my experience of, like, going from, like, I want to fucking die to like I am life. Like, pfft. there's a whole like, there's a whole other video on that. I'm probably gonna rewatch this one day and then like do a whole other like video about that because that is fascinating. Like, I want to die to like I am life. And this, I mean, this is when you realize that you can't actually die. And even when you die, you're not actually dead. You know, it's just like oh shit. And then you realize that you are life, and so you don't even need to really have opinions about life because life just is, and you just are, and you're just experiencing it. And then again Jesus fucking Christ <laughs> so we're talking about what's happening in here and like how connected <laughs> to the wisdom and the sensation of our bodies and like the oh you know like how often have I been like steamrolling literally yesterday steamrolling on ahead doing I'm doing like queering literally blah, 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 queering literary eight I'm getting so tired I'm so ready to wrap this up queering literary agents at the moment and just yeah I'm like I'm like at my computer like this my shoulders are getting more and more tense 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 I'm like whoo okay and then I stepped away I was like I never want to fucking do that again like sending these queries is just like killing me a little bit um but it's like how like that's the that's the conditioning that's the pattern of like do stuff you hate get rewarded so I'm like, all right, I gotta find, there's got to be, and I think a part of me now is like a bit like hip to the, what's that? Hip to the, hip to the wise, word to the wise, no, like hip to the, fuck, what's the fucking expression? Hip to the truth? I don't know, something, someone comment it for me, please. But like, kind of like catching on that, like, there's, it's like there's this little inner infomercial voice in me being like, there's got to be a better way. Like, seriously, there's got to be a fucking better way to do this. Um, but like, yeah, how often do we, oh, how often do we like think that we have to like disconnect from our bodies in order to like get something as if like being in our bodies is not everything that we've always ever wanted anyway. It's like, oh. anyway, all right, I'm going to go because I'm just, I refuse to force myself to do, you know, force anymore. I've just been in this pattern of like, just sink deeper, be more like whatever. It's like, fuck no, like, no, absolutely not. I'm like, when I'm done, I'm done. That's just end. End it there. All right. Um, all right, cool. Okay, that's all. I love you. I'll see you in my next video. Go fly your fucking ship. I will be. Bye, kings. Bye, queens.